Hi, welcome to Studio Sparks. This is um, my demo of negative space painting of koi fish. So today I have already drawn in my <clears throat> koi fish and I'm painting around the um, positive koi fish images to paint the background, the negative space, or the water. <clears throat> I am using a round tip um, size 12, I believe, paintbrush, um, which we, I got at Humanity Books in, have, in Hastings, New Zealand. The nice thing about um, doing negative space painting is it just gives you a different way of looking at things. So I have created a turquoise water blue color with um, some nice blue paint and a little yellow. Um, cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue and I'm also just wetting the area around the koi and then adding my blue so then I get that watery effect so it's more of a wet on wet application um, and when you do that it also helps keep that paint where you want it to go um, allows you to apply it evenly and um, specifically to the background <clears throat> uh, water areas. So I do try to apply it in a way so that it um, it's not just a solid color and I'm always applying it more of a lighter tone. Um, occasionally I bring in some more saturated tones where I've um, added a little more paint to my paintbrush to um, give some of those like watery feel like you know creating waves and or um, uh, rain droppy or droplets where the wa some water or something has dropped into the water and then I'm also adding a little darker more concentrated paint around the fish so then it um, gives them, you know, it's almost like they're casting a shadow on the bottom of the pond. So I'll just continue to apply paint around the fish. I'm always trying to make it so it doesn't look like I'm painting around the fish, right? So I'm <clears throat> moving my brush in a way so that it's um, more horizontal, I guess, to the fish rather than uh, painting their circles around the fish. Um, so then I'm bringing in a little bit slightly different colored blue and creating these water droplet images. Um, <clears throat> and it's good to just bring in <clears throat> slightly different colors of blue because water reflects light and there's all different colors that kind of appear. Um, so that also helps you have that impression that it is water rather than, you know, just a solid um, color. So I'm always incorporating a variety of colors into my water so then it just gives some variety to your image. This is just a paper that is um, out of an, it's an A5 size paper from a board it's kind of not not ideally watercolor paper but it's um works pretty well for just these quick demos and um it's a stiffer paper so it doesn't curl <clears throat> so you can see that i'm bringing in different um colors and some more highly concentrated because I've already put down my lighter layer so now I'm just layering bringing in more layers and thinking of shapes that I see within the water as well so it's not just that I <clears throat> um, am painting a wash I'm painting shapes that I see within the waters so um, you know if you have an image of water to look at that really helps when you're painting this you know so <clears throat> when I'm doing this negative painting, it's a really helpful to take a break between, uh, when, you know, before you start doing your fish. 
um, making sure that that background is dry. Um, but maybe I'm still, you know, you can take time to keep working on the water. So I'll bring in <clears throat> um, more colors or I'll dry my brush and try to subtract out some of the colors to create some of the white highlights. That's what I'm doing at the moment here is um, subtracting out um, some of the blues so that it's giving this uh, movement of the water and accenting the movement of the fish. Um, so I'm subtracting some of that blue paint that I've already put down. Now I'm going to create the shadows of what I see in the fish. So I'm using a very light tone of a gray color. Um, so I've created that gray just mixing um, some of my primaries and um, sometimes I'll make it more of a purpley gray. This one is a bit of a bluer gray. Um, I like mixing the paints to create my gray rather than just using a lighter, you know, a, bl a black and white combination. Um, it just makes it so that the fish color is more related to the background because you have those colors anyways that you've been using for the water. So I'm just looking at where the shadows are and where the highlights of the fish are and I'm applying those um, this wash of gray to those areas of the fish. Um, just thinking of keeping it a lighter tone so then I can build up and maybe there's certain areas that are a darker shadow, so then I will add it a bit more um, thickness to my gray tone. Here I'm also creating patterns, like dot patterns, to um, repeat kind of that feel of the scales of the fish. So <clears throat> I'm not being too fussy about this, obviously. Um, this is a sped up demonstration three times faster than what I actually did in real life, real time. But you can see that I, um, I'm thoughtful about where I'm placing my shadows and my um, dots, but not overly precise. So this is just a loose um, drawing or draw painting that we um, allows us to just explore the, the fish and look at where I see shadows. <clears throat> so when that layer is done, that shadow layer is done, I will allow it to dry some before adding the colors. So there's the spots of the fish and you can see I'm using an orange mixed with a bit of red to um, and yellow to get that color, the koi orangey colors for the spots. And I'll bring that in <clears throat> to the image, looking at where where it is on my image. I don't always make it a solid orange color either, like I add a little red to it so there's some variation because on the fish with the shadows and the highlights it's not going to be a solid one colored orange, it's going to be a variation from where you know the lights hitting it or also having that variation of color gives the fish more, more shape to them, you know, so it's not filling in a solid dot or something. I'm always kind of applying it in a way that <clears throat> doesn't allow for that even tone. It gives it more of a splotchy feel. That's just um, that's my style and what I how I see it. <laughs> so I'm coming back with that gray to add another layer of shadow and getting accenting those shapes that I had with the shadow. Um, so watercolor is a lot about layering and they call it glazing when you add new layers of color so that you um, 
helps get the shape of the fish and helps you get the shape of whatever you're creating. When you add those layers, um, that glazing effect um, just gives your image more depth. So this is a darker spots on that koi fish. So I've mixed uh, blue with some of that darker gray tone um, to get the um, black spots that are on these koi. <clears throat> I'm also using a um, fine tipped pen to, and I add watercolor to that um, pen to um, allow me to get some really fine points to come back in and draw using that um, ink pen with my watercolor. So I take my brush and wipe the paint onto the end of the pen so it creates a little puddle and then um, I'm able to apply those fine lines with that pen. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so you can see I have my paintbrush in one hand and the pen in the other um, and just getting more co color added trying a bit of a lighter shade for this one um, it's kind of more of a yellow okra color, grayish yellow okra, um, just to give it that variation. So the fish that's down in the far left hand corner has the darker shadows and then the one upper right I'm using slightly lighter shadows just again to create that um, depth and <coughs> variation. So I'll just come in again, adding a bit more shadowing. Um, then I'll even try using some of my white watercolor to add some of those highlights in the um, in the water. And what it also allows me to do is to bring that water up over the koi fish to give that illusion or that impression that we are looking at the koi fish and they are underneath that water, not on top of the water. So this <clears throat> allows me to give that kind of transparency of the water while keeping the clear um, shapes of the uh, koi fish. So that's handy to have the white watercolor to allow you to bring in some of those highlights and it's not so so concentrated or so um, opaque that you you can have that transparency of that white watercolor which is different than like if I was to use um, you know acrylic paint or white acrylic paint it's a lot more opaque so I wouldn't have as much wouldn't have quite that same transparency that you can get with the white watercolor. Well, I hope you have a great time painting today. It's a perfect day for painting here. I look forward to seeing what your koi fish looks like.